Hi, I'm Alessandro Bernardi and welcome to this series of video dedicated to the Mind the Color extension. Mind the Color is an extension for Adobe Photoshop created by Carlo Diamanti, a very well-known Italian photographer and also a very high-level beauty retoucher. In fact, the idea behind the panel itself is to include all the kind of techniques used by Carlo in his workflow for post-production, retouching and also color grading inside Adobe Photoshop. So what you will find uh, inside the Mind the Color extension is an amazing collection of tools that can make your workflow much faster, more powerful and also flexible. Now, before we take a look at the panel itself, I must inform you that some of these techniques uh, are pretty advanced and use uh, some features uh, uh, inside Photoshop that many users uh, don't really know very well. I'm talking about uh, how to manage with uh, uh, channels, alpha channels, uh, also layers, uh, adjustment layers uh, with masks uh, and also uh, stuff like this. So. Before using the panel, you should know how to deal with this kind of stuff. And now let's take a look at the panel, how to set it up correctly and get ready to work with the Mind the Color extension. After downloading the installer, for Mac users, you should go before installation to System Preferences, Security and Privacy, and you should unlock your preferences and allow apps downloaded from Apple Store and also identify developers. Now you can proceed with the installation with right click and choosing open. In the usual way. And after the installation is completed, we can now go inside Photoshop and launch the Mind the Color extension. Inside Adobe Photoshop, you can launch the extension on the window. Extension Legacy, if you are using a, a version of Photoshop uh, after 2021, and choose Extension Legacy Mind the Color. Now, the first time you launch the Mind the Color extension, you should enter the serial number that you have received. Let's do that. And click on the Send button. After clicking on the Send button, you can now choose again Extension Legacy Mind the Color. So let's open an image and take a look at the interface. On the left side of the panel, you will find some of the most used adjustment layers, like for example, levels, uh, curves, uh, and also use saturation, color balance, uh, channel mixer, selective color, and so on. On the right side of the panel, instead, you will find uh, some of the most used tools in uh, retouching and post-production, like, for example, the mixer brush, the clone stamp, uh, the patch tool, uh, the healing brush tool, uh, and so on. Just below this area of the panel, you will find a very important feature of the Mind the Color extension, that are the luminosity masks. Now, luminosity masks are a very important feature in any workflow for post-production and retouching. This is why Carlo Diamanti has created a dedicated area of different kind of uh, luminosity masks. For example, in the first row, you will find five buttons that can load the luminosity masks uh, for lightness uh, or mid-tones uh, or darkness. Now, before you click on one of those buttons, uh, you should select the first bitmap layers. So I'm going to select the background layer and load, uh, for example, this mask or this mask. As you can see, when I click on one of those buttons, a different kind of luminosity mask is loaded as a selection. Or instead of that, you can click on L mask and after a few seconds, what you will find inside the channels palette is all these kind of luminosity masks created by the panel as alpha channels. 
Now, as you can see, we have uh, 15 different alpha channels and uh, the name of those alpha channels are the same uh, for these 15 buttons available inside the luminosity mask area. The s light one channel is exactly the same selection I can load by clicking on the L1 button. Or the S-Dark channel is the same kind of channel I can load as a selection by clicking on the D1 button and so on. We will go more in depth with luminosity masks uh, in a dedicated video. Now, let's take a look at uh, how you can set up uh, this area into the panel. By clicking on the settings button, you can make uh, the luminosity panel draggable. This is very comfortable when uh, dealing with different kind of commands. So now I can move the luminosity masks uh, area and uh, they are still available once I click on every kind of command uh, I have inside the panel. And this is very useful as uh, luminosity masks are a very important part of the workflow. Now, let's take a look at some other settings. The first one I'm going to show you is this button that will make uh, unpersistent uh, the panel. What it means is that the next time you will reopen the panel, all the scripts inside the panel will be reloaded. And so all the previous settings inside any command of the panel will be reloaded from scratch. The other two settings are just below this first button. Those settings are related to the custom mode of the color wheels that is available in this menu just here. So yes, Color wheels are available inside Photoshop now with the Mind Color extension. This custom option is exactly the same setting you can uh, set up uh, here by choosing uh, one of those blending modes, for example, darken or lighten for gradient one and gradient two, and also different kind of uh, opacity. We will talk about those options uh, in a dedicated video. And the last setting I want to show you is uh, this one. By clicking here, you can switch from the V1 to version 2 menu. And now you will see that all the kind of commands available as button before are available as a jog. Okay. You know, it's a kind of a personal preference. Uh, I prefer to set up uh, the layout in the V1. So I'm going to switch back uh, to the version 1 layout and click close. Let's talk about some settings of the host platform of the Mind Color extension, that is actually Adobe Photoshop. The first setting I want to suggest to check out uh, is inside the Photoshop preferences, and I'm talking about uh, the performance settings. As some techniques inside the panel use a lot of steps, I suggest you change the history states number from the default condition to maybe 100 or 200. That's my suggestion. And also when you deal with the very large, uh, big images, uh, maybe you should choose uh, a cache levels uh, uh, higher, like uh, 8, for example. The other preference uh, I suggest to set up correctly is into the history palette. And now you can see how many steps uh, the Mind Color extension has used to create all those uh, luminosity channels. And this is why I usually set up uh, my history option. The first option I suggest to check is this one. So in case of need, uh, you can go back to the previously saved version of your document in case you need it, of course. And the other one I find very useful is uh, Allow Nonlinear History. This option allows me to go back and forth in my history palette by choosing one of those states and launching any kind of command or operation without losing all the steps uh, after the one I have chosen. The other kind of preferences I suggest to set up correctly are strictly not related with the Mind Color extension. I'm talking about color settings inside Adobe Photoshop. If you go on the edit menu and choose color settings, you really should check out which options are available inside this window. This is Adobe Photoshop default condition, and I can say that is the worst condition you can work on talking about color management. So my suggestion is to choose whatever 
settings you like here. If you, for example, are in Europe, I suggest uh, an option like uh, Europe General Purpose 3 or, for example, Prepress 3. Or if you are in the, in the US, Maybe you can choose uh, any one you prefer here from North America, uh, general purpose number two and whatever. The next option I suggest to set up correctly is the grayscale profile. Now, most of those settings uh, uses uh, a dot gain 20% or 15%. My suggestion is to use gray gamma 2.2 as this is the native gamma of the most used RGB color space, like for example, sRGB or Adobe RGB. The other options that you should check out and set up correctly are the color management policies. And here my suggestions goes to preserve embedded profiles for all those options for RGB, CMYK and gray. And the last option I suggest to set up correctly is this one. Now that we have set up correctly all the color settings inside Photoshop, we can save, for example, those settings by clicking on the save button and, for example, choosing a name for those settings. So they will be available inside all the Adobe applications. Okay, so now we are ready to go with the Mind Color extension, but before we begin to work, I must tell you one more thing. Sometimes it can happen that you have a, a very big document with a lots of layers, a very large image, and you just click on a, a button inside the panel and it looks like nothing is happening. Well, actually it's not, because all the calculations are always made in background. So be aware of that and do not click in any other area of the panel or click again on the same button. Otherwise, they can, this can lead to error messages or even crashes of the extension or even of Adobe Photoshop itself. So please wait until all the calculations are completed and the final result is shown inside Adobe Photoshop before taking a decision about the final result. Now we are really ready to begin to work with the Mind the Color extension so we can switch to the next video in which we will talk about luminosity masks. See you in the next video.